Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right, Jay Tolan Media One uh, has woken up from his deep slumber uh, and put out a couple of videos in recent weeks. Uh, but his latest one called Uncovering the Secrets of the Californian Aqueduct uh, made me laugh pretty hard, actually. I swear to God he's taking the piss out of Flat Earth sometimes. Uh, so anyway, I thought I'd break my own video making drought uh, and respond. Uh, so basically the first 10 minutes or so, uh, there's a lot of superfluous shit. Uh, you know, the spooky music in some places and the, the upbeat music in the other places. Uh, and a whole lot of, you know, talking shit about military secrets and what have you. Uh, anyway, the whole video is 51 minutes long, uh, but could easily have been about 10 or 15 minutes total. Uh, so all I'm responding to uh, is the first 20 minutes or so. So what Jay Tolan did uh, is take his theodolite out, uh, set it up at various sites along this road, uh, and measure the elevation angle up to a little building up on a hill, uh, something like 10 to 15 miles away. Uh, so here's one of the shots that he's taken, uh, and there you can see the little building that he's aiming at, uh, just a little bit to the left of the crosshairs. Uh, and then he gives us his results. Uh, so in the yellow table, you can see the, the seven sites here uh, with their distances in feet to the mountain. Uh, and keep in mind that all seven of these sites have virtually the same elevation. Uh, they're all within a, a few feet of each other. Uh, then in the, the next few columns, uh, he shows you the angles that he measured. Uh, and good boy, uh, he takes the average of, of the forward and reverse measurements. Uh, and then in that second last column, the height column, uh, he does some simple trigonometry to work out the difference in height uh, between his theodolite uh, and the little building on top of the mountain. Uh, so from site one, uh, which is actually the furthest from the mountain, uh, he works out that the height difference uh, between the, his theodolite uh, and the mountain is 2,734.7 feet. Uh, but then from site two, uh, which is the same elevation as site one, uh, he gets a difference in elevation of 2,774 feet. Uh, now, I don't know about you guys, uh, but in my world, I'd like the elevation of mountains to stay the same. Uh, and if you look further down this uh, list of heights, uh, you'll see that the further away he is from the mountain, the more that mountain drops away. Hint, fucking hint. Uh, so he's put those heights into the chart down the bottom here. Uh, and if you flurfs weren't fucking numpties uh, when it comes to math, you'd realize that what he's effectively plotting here is the drop due to curvature. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So here are the calculations for the amount of drop at these distances. All I've done here is convert the distance into miles uh, and then done the usual eight inches per mile squared uh, and then express that in feet. And when I plot those drop figures uh, against Jay Tolan's ever-changing mountain elevation, uh, you'll see in my graph up top that it matches the shape really well. I actually swear sometimes that this guy is a glober uh, and he's just seeing how long he can prank you guys. It's hilarious. But anyway, uh, instead of drawing that silly graph, uh, what he should have done is take all these competing models, uh, use those models to make predictions for the angle that he measures with the theodolite, uh, and then see which model fares best. Uh, so at the top here, we've just got the, the simple flat earth formula. You've got the, the change in height between the target and the observer over that distance, uh, and then take the arc tangent of that to get your angle. Uh, on the bottom here, we've got the formula for a globe. Uh, if you want to see how this is derived, uh, then you can watch my old video about the, the Californian aqueduct, uh, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, also keep in mind that if you want to take into account refraction in this formula, you just use an increased radius. Uh, standard refraction, of course, uses a 7 over 6R uh, radius multiplier. Right, uh, so we need the observer height as well as the target mountain height. Uh, JT didn't actually give us the elevation for the mountain, uh, nor did he give us the exact coordinates for each uh, observer site so we could go and work out his observer uh, height. Uh, so we're gonna have to make an approximation. 
he is correct though, in that the road he's on uh, hardly changes elevation. So what we'll just do is use the, the average elevation of 2,318 feet and just add on five feet for the tripod. Uh, so the observer height we'll use is 2,323 feet. Uh, and remember, remember he didn't give us the target height either. Uh, all he did was try and calculate the difference in height between his location uh, and this little building up on the hill. Uh, he didn't even give us the fucking coordinates for this building. Anyway, uh, it looks like the terrain that the building is on is about 5,190 feet. And I'll have a stab at about 12 feet for the building itself. And that gives us a target height of 5,202 feet. Right, uh, so here are those calculations. We've got the observer height, we've got the target height. Uh, we've also got the radius expressed in feet, uh, and I've also calculated the, the larger radius uh, to take into account standard refraction of uh, 7 over 6R. And then I've just applied the formulas from a, a few slides back, and voila! We've got the predicted angle for the flat Earth in column C, uh, and then predicted angles for the globe uh, without refraction and with refraction in columns D and E. Uh, and then finally, in the last column, I've just copied in Jay Tolan's actual measurements. Uh, and surprise, surprise, uh, the measurements are all incredibly close uh, to the globe predictions. Most of them are actually less than a, a hundredth of one degree off, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and just for shits and giggles, uh, here are those same values plotted on an Excel chart. Uh, so hopefully that sort of drives the point home. Uh, one thing to note, actually, is, is just how close the predictions are between the globe with refraction, which is the blue line here, uh, and the globe without refraction, which is this green line. Uh, all that means is that over these fairly short distances of about 10 to 15 miles, refraction makes very little difference uh, to the predicted angle. Um, so when Jay Tolan says that upward refraction can explain the results, uh, hopefully you can get an idea of just how much upward refraction he needs uh, in order to have his uh, flat earth prediction match the results. Um, and funnily enough, I actually made a video uh, a while back specifically addressing JT uh, and his ideas about upward refraction. Uh, he clearly didn't watch it. Um, basically, he seems to think that light typically refracts upwards because of the temperature gradient. Uh, so, you know, warm air at the surface would be less dense than the cold air higher up. Uh, therefore, light bends up. Uh, but as with most flurfers, uh, he completely ignores that there is a pressure gradient as well, uh, where the higher pressure at the surface is more dense uh, than the lower pressure higher up. Um, and the pressure gradient tends to be far stronger than the, the temperature gradient. Uh, and that means light typically bends downwards not upwards. Uh, so feel free to, to mosey on over to his channel, uh, tell him about this debunk video, uh, as well as the old upward refraction video. Uh, the link will be in the description. And uh, let him know what a great globe prover he is. Well done, champ. <laughs>